central focus, one notion that we want to drive in the hearts and minds of believers and those that seek the face of God, especially through seasons that are distressing. And that notion is don't stop praying. I want to focus on the book of Nehemiah in our next few installments to grab out of the text uh, the principles that remind us of why we ought not ever stop praying. Listen to the Bible, Nehemiah chapter one, and we'll give an overview and give our thought for today. The words of Nehemiah, son of Hakaliah, in the month of Keselev, in the 20th year, while I was in the city of Susa, Hananiah, one of my brothers, came from Judah with some other men, and I questioned them about the Jewish remnant that survived the exile, and also about Jerusalem. They said to me, those who survived the exile and are back in the province are in great trouble and disgrace. The wall of Jerusalem is broken down and its gates have been burned with fire. When I heard these things, I sat down and wept. For some days I mourned and fasted and prayed before the God of heaven. One other text in chapter two and verse number four. The king said to me, what is it you want? Then I prayed to the God of heaven, and I answered the king. Nehemiah, the book of Nehemiah, is a historical picture of God moving through a leader and a people to reform a nation in its most vital and its most vital physical symbol, Jerusalem. The city was ravaged. The people were scattered. The walls were destroyed. Walls, walls that represented closure and cover. Walls that, pre that, that represented prevention and protection. Walls that represented security and sacredness. And Jerusalem had been ravaged by an enemy who left her uncovered, unprotected, unsecure, and open to pending harm. Nehemiah's story is one in which God moves to cover and protect, to secure and restore his people and their status among the world. In this text, we see one of the most dominant features throughout the entire book for this reformer's passion and the acts of restoration is the practice of prayer. We will learn over and over again, a number of reasons why we should, as the people of God, never stop praying. And even in the first text that we looked at, there's a, there's a, there's a rationale for why we should never stop praying. Don't stop praying. Why? Because number one, prayer gives you pause for a better perspective. In Nehemiah 2 and verse number 4 again, you notice that he goes on and he's, he's talked about the story. He's talked about what he's heard. His heart is broken. Now he's in the presence of the king. He's standing before Artaxerxes and he's the wine bearer for Artaxerxes. And as he's standing there, his countenance is down. He's upset. But the king and his wife both love Nehemiah. And while they are in his presence, Nehemiah's countenance is down. The king asks him, what in the world is going on? All of these things about what he's heard, about his his homeland, about his people, about the status of his of his of the city, unprotected, uncovered, uh, open, and 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 and, and uh, susceptible to even more harm, are flooding Nehemiah's thoughts. And the Bible says in verse number four, the king said to me, "What is it that you want, Nehemiah?" Before he answered, pray again. Don't stop praying because prayer gives you pause for a better perspective. Think about it. think about it. He had just received bad news. He was emotional and reflective. 
He was processing the powerlessness to change what he just learned. But he was still, he still had in mind uh, to have the composure that was necessary. In fact, he had to have the composure that was necessary to be in front of the king. Have you ever noticed that sometimes while you're going through what you're going through, while you're in the throes of life itself, that every now and then just a little prayer, just a little whisper to God, a little moment to ask God to be involved in what you're going through is exactly what you need to keep the you that wants to go off in the right space. A moment in prayer allows you to meet up with God's peace, to meet up with God's presence, to meet up with God's power, to meet up with God's purpose in order to get beyond the issues that are going off in your heart. Let me let me challenge you. Don't stop praying. In fact, take a moment and pause and pray and gain some perspective because it may be exactly what you need for your Artaxerxes like moment as you stand like Nehemiah to not lose your composure when everything else around you is going bananas. Don't stop praying. In fact, let that prayer give you pause enough to get your perspective and move according to the call of God. So Nehemiah shows us that. But then not only that, don't stop praying because number two, prayer gives room to witness what God will reveal about his covenant care. Look at verse number five and following. As he, as he goes on, you, you, see, you see the text. He, he prayed to the king, uh, prayed to the God of heaven, and then I answered the king. If it pleases the king, and if your servant has found favor in his sight, let him send me to the city in Judah where my fathers are buried so that I can rebuild. Then the king with the queen sitting beside him asked, how long will your journey take and, and when will you get back? It, it pleased the king to send me. So I set a time. Drop down to verse number eight, though. You'll see why, why it pleased the king. And may I have a letter to Asaph, keeper of the king's forest, so that he will give me timber to make beams for the gates of the citadel by the temple and the city wall for the residence that I, uh, the residence I will occupy. Watch this. Here it is. And because the gracious hand of my God was up on me, the king granted my request. Listen to me. Don't stop praying because prayer gives you room to witness what God will reveal about his covenant care. I love this. Nehemiah paused to talk to, to, to talk to God, to pray to God before he answered the king. But when he answered the king, all of what he requested from the king was answered by the king. No, no, no. I tricked you. Not by the king. Answered because, verse number eight, the great hand of my God was upon me. So he granted the request and it shows us that we need to remember God is never shocked by what we go through. He's never surprised by the setbacks in our situation. He's not uh, alarmed by the challenges that we are up against. But really what you need to remember is that God is already here. He's already handling the work that would be necessary that he's called you on. Don't you know that whatever it is that God has called you to do, he is already in the business of working out how you will get it done. He's already moving the pieces. He's already providing the supplies. He's already granting opportunity. He's already opening doors. He's already ahead of you so that when you say I've got a work to do and I cannot come down, it's your God who has provided the means for you to get that work done. You should never forget that it is often the case that God has your effort in mind. He has an effort in mind with your name on it and he will reveal it to you. He'll provide the means. He'll give you a heart to do the work and your time in prayer gives you room to see what God has been seeing the entire time. You and I are called to move into the occasions that God has granted us, knowing that the gracious hand of your God is upon you. The gracious hand of your God is covering things that are going on around you. The gracious hand of your God is what's moving the parts. That's why you got the job. That's why you've been prevented from a job. That's why you've been blessed with open doors. That's why you have what you need. That's why sometimes life is put on pause. That's why God provides people in your life. That's why God removes people from your life. The gracious hand of your God is always on you to do the work that he's called you to do. So don't you stop praying. Don't stop praying because whatever season
season you're in, it's time for you to build in your life what God has called you to build to restore his presence, show his power, demonstrate his promises, and move with purpose in such a way that God gets glory with every breath you take and every decision that you make. Continue to move and let God move through you. God wants, like he does with Nehemiah, he wants to allow your effort of service to bring him glory that only your life can do. So you take a moment, don't stop praying because it gives you pause to gain perspective. Don't think emotionally, think responsibly. It gives you and I room to witness what God will reveal about his covenant care. He's already up the road. You're walking into a moment that God's been seeing from the dawn of time. He's not surprised even as it is revealed to you. He's already there. He's already moving. He's already answering your prayers. Isaiah 65 and verse 24. God is in the business of making sure that you are cared for for his glory and his namesake. So don't stop praying. Let's talk to him even right now. Father, we love you. We thank you, we honor you, and we praise you for being a God who moves beyond us, who, who is a God who answers our prayers, a God who continues to reveal to us just how awesome you are, how much you care, the ways in which, Lord God, you, you show yourself strong in our life. And we thank you for that. We thank you, Father, for choosing us. We thank you, Father, for keeping your gracious hand upon us. We thank you, Lord God, for being the one who gives us composure when we need it. Lord, thank you for this principle that we see in the book of Nehemiah. When you know, Lord God, emotionally, that sometimes we want to go off. We want to throw our hand uh, our, our, our towel and we want to give up, we want to walk away, but we need every now and then to pause and reflect and gain perspective so that we can see and recognize that you are the one that we live for. You are the one who has called us. You are the one who will continue to insulate and keep us. Father, we thank you for that. Help us, Father, to continue to reach out to you and to know that you are always ahead of us, that there's nothing that goes on in our life that surprises you, but you are weaving and working, insulating and protecting us. And many times, Lord God, even protecting us from the failure that we in, we do on our own lives. God, thank you for that. Thank you for being the one who can pick us up. Thank you for being the one who can clean us up. Thank you for your goodness, your grace, your mercy, your care, your tender kindness, and all of what you do to keep us in covenant love and covenant relationship with you. God, we pray in this world that we're in that you help us to build up wherever we can to, to restore those areas that are broken down by, by folk that are disheartened and people that are disillusioned by the world that we live in. Lord, you know the, 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 the issues that this pandemic is creating in the hearts and minds of people all around us. Help us to be Nehemiah to them, to build up the walls of your presence in their life, to build up the places that are broken where they can see you and see your glory, see your person, see your power, see the ability that you have to insulate all of us. God, we need you. We need your spirit to be encouraged to move forward in our everyday life. We, we honor you for being the one that we can lean on and rely on, Lord God. And we ask even right now that you bless us to be a people who keep our hands and our fingers interlocked with your hands and yours. God, use us for your namesake. Bless us to be useful to you in this season where we need you. Continue to heal, strengthen, and renew. Help us to live every moment just for you, and we will be careful and mindful to give you all the glory. We love you, we thank you, we honor you, and in the name of Jesus, we together say amen and amen. Listen, don't stop praying. Prayer gives you pause for a better perspective, and prayer gives you room to witness what God will reveal about his covenant care for you. Allow God to use you like Nehemiah to build up the walls of the world around us that so desperately need God's restoration and God's renewal. Listen, I'm going to pray for you. I'm asking you, please pray for me and let's watch our God change everything around us. God bless you and God keep you. Able, able, yeah. Faces you say, God is able.